Hello, my friends. Thank you so much for viewing this video and taking the time to listen to my story. This story really isn't mine to tell. It's my son's. I have a son. His name is Joshua. And he is an amazing 15-year-old who is currently in a group home in Greenville, Tennessee. 13 years ago, I had a neighbor who didn't like me very much. And one day I went outside to use their phone at, an, at another neighbor's house to use some other neighbor's phone to call and order a pizza. Joshua, 13 months at the time, was taking a nap in his crib. My neighbors that didn't care for me very much, that liked to cause trouble, they called and told the police that I had left my child alone in the house and that I was gone. I was right in front of my apartment, like almost right in front of it. And he was taking a nap. So when the police came, I brought Joshua out, showed them to them, and they took him and arrested me. My neighbors made up all kinds of lies about me to get my son taken. I did have a prescription for opiates and I did have opiates in my system. Um, so that's what happened. Now, I ended up moving to South Carolina from Tennessee because I had no help in Tennessee from my significant other at the time's family or any of them. All of them wanted to see us lose our child because they're just very spiteful people. They never wanted to see my ex-husband make it in any kind of way. So they found a couple who got married just to foster my son. Now I want to say first and foremost, the foster mom in this case, no judgments. She and I have made amends. I will share the story with you about what happened, but this is not to place judgment or blame on the victims. And she was a victim. Her and her boyfriend that had been together several years, they got married just to foster my son. She, she didn't think she could have children. She really wanted a child. I really connected with her and wanted that for her because I felt like maybe this was happening to me because maybe it was meant for me to give this child to her. I, I, that's, that was my thinking. I was trying to keep it positive and optimistic. I had another child while this investigation was going on. And anyway, so during this investigation, my doctor put me on methadone. I had a condition called cervicalgia. This is where um, estrogen can rise too high during the pregnancy and cause inflammation in the cervical unit of your brain. This causes cluster migraines, which can cause nausea to the point that you can't eat anything because you're just sick. They put me on Percocet with Joshua because that's who I had it with. And then with Joey, I had it and they put me on methadone. The court in Tennessee totally, totally disregarded the fact that none of them are medical professionals and used the fact that I was on methadone against me. Then they said that termination had to happen so adoption could take place. This was after I did two years of jumping through hoops, passed my hair follicle, passed every single thing. Uh, they made a big deal about us not wanting to pay child support. Well, no offense, but if you're someone who claims you can take care of my child better than me, why do you need my money when the state's giving you $900 a month? That, that's how I felt about it. Now, all my owed child support's paid. I feel a little differently about it now. I think back then I was just very, very upset. Joshua was kept from us several times. We drove out to... Um, Jefferson County, where the foster parents lived, to see him every month. We were kept away from him for four consecutive months, and I couldn't figure out why. They kept saying he was sick. Well, why would you have us drive all the way out to Tennessee, an eight-hour drive, waste all that gas money if he was sick? You know, they did this for four months. I found out that the foster mom got pregnant outside of the marriage by another man, and that these people were getting a divorce, okay? DCS played a part in hiding this from us. They can't say they didn't because four times in a row, four months in a row, nothing done about a sick child every single month that we drove up there. Yeah, I knew better. And <clears throat> now I was going to sign my rights over to this woman, but because I knew she had lied, I didn't want to do that. You lied to me one time, I question all truths. But now that I look back on it, 
Had I been in her shoes, I can't say that I would have been honest about what I did either. So listen, no judgments, okay? So she wants Joshua, and she's trying to get me to sign him over to her, but I'm kind of mad at her at this point, so I won't. And the man gets Joshua and keeps him from her. They get divorced. In the paperwork, it says that she will not pursue to see Joshua because Brian is going to adopt him. But he cannot seek child support after her or anything. And she still has some custodial rights until Joshua is adopted. Now, if you worked for child services and you had a child that was in a t tough situation like that, what would you do? Well, they hid it from me. And then the foster parents were like, oh, we're just going to let the foster dad's mom adopt him. So that's just supposed to be okay with me. Now you're just passing him around to whoever will have him to not be able to give him back to me. That makes no sense, right? So then, um, they terminate my rights. I appeal it. Nothing happens. Um, this guy's mom, who was supposed to adopt my son, ends up passing away. This guy turns into a raging alcoholic, so does his father, and together they have my son in an unstable environment with two raging alcoholics, DCS, never did a 90-day follow-up appointment, which they are supposed to do after a termination because of adoption. Yeah, they broke a lot of laws, and they didn't try to do anything they were supposed to do. Now, two years later, this child, or 12 years later, this child finds me. He was on my mind heavy, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I said, Lord, if it's meant for me to, to get in touch with him, please make it happen. I came home from church a couple days after that prayer, and there he was on my messenger. He told me that he's been in trouble. He told me that he stole his grandpa's car and ran it going 90 mile an hour into a cop car and got put on house arrest at 12 years old. Yeah, he told me that stuff before he told me, but I get hit. I get smacked. I'm failing all my classes, mom, because nobody helps me. I'm stupid. I'm ugly. And I said, no, you are not. You are not any of those things. It is not your fault. They are supposed to be molding you into this wonderful, productive member of society. And coming home every day and grabbing a Miller Lite isn't how you do it. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry if it hurts some of y'all's feelings. Listen, you want to have a beer after work? Cool. But if you got kids, prioritize that. My dad would at least drink his beer and try to help me with my homework. My dad dropped out of school at 14. He would at least try, but I know what it's like to sit in a bar booth and watch your parents have a good time and drink. You don't understand it as a child. And I'm not talking bad about my parents or anybody's parents for that matter, but I am saying... This man had no business raising my son. This child shows me video proof of them withholding meals from him, of them choking him. And I tell him, call child services, report it. He does that. Child services comes and investigates. Guess what they tell him? Well, Joshua, we know you've been getting in a lot of trouble. So that makes it okay for someone to put their hands on a child? Oh, did I forget to mention these people know someone at DCS? So I involved an ombudsman with that situation to make sure Joshua's case would get handled. I know they're not going to give me no information. I don't have a no contact order. I just had my rights terminated, okay? So the ombudsman says, oh, they're going to do this, that, and the third. They put him in a foster, in a uh, group home. So the, foster, so the guardian doesn't have to pay child support. Yeah. Then he gets out of the group home, goes right back into the same environment, and they put him off on a woman, one of their renters that rents from them every single weekend, even offered to pay her hundreds of dollars. She wants to adopt Joshua, but guess what? They're like, no, he's a troubled kid. You don't need that in your house, and we don't want him on our property. So guess what? They put their hands on Joshua again. Joshua runs away from home on April 7th, 2022, the day after his birthday, with no shoes on on a cold winter night in Tennessee. No one investigates why he ran away, but you know what they do? They charge him. They charge him, and he goes to court for running away from home. After about 10 reports went in that weekend, DCS finally went, mouth swabbed the parents. They failed for alcohol, but they left Joshua there because alcohol is legal. 
Well, pain pills are too, by prescription. Does that make it okay for people to abuse it? I lost my son due to substance abuse, pretty much. Now, I've been clean and sober for years. And I actually help people get clean and sober. And my son was self-medicating when he found me. He doesn't do that anymore because he has learned from me that that's not the way, son. He hasn't gotten in trouble with the law ever since he found me, other than running away from home. So, now the parents, they have allowed him to go back into the system, but not to get him back. And anyone who tries to reach out to the group home to foster my child, these parents sabotage with lies and tall tales. The woman who has custodial rights to my son was a part of the permanency plan, and now she's been removed, and she don't even know why. Nobody has even told her what's going on, and she's got custodial rights. This is highly illegal. And then the woman who they put him off on every weekend... They're like, well, he can't go there because that's our property. And, of course, DCS has to abide by that. But now they're making her. She has a son and a daughter. They're making her get a four-bedroom place before she can foster him. You guys pile up five, six, and seven children in foster homes in one bedroom. And don't tell me you don't because I know they do. They are allowing a child abuser and molester because Joshua did confess in a letter that he wanted to kill himself because he had been molested by his dad. They are allowing a molester and an abuser to have a say-so and micromanage this child's case. My son will not sit in a group home until he is 18. And I am on my feet, and I am sober and clean, but I am not rich. Now, we live in the beautiful city of Salt Lake City, Utah. We are members of the church here. Some people might find that weird, but let me tell you something about this church. My husband and I were in our our last relapse a few years ago. This church is what helped us learn how to never, ever, ever live like that again. Now, I don't expect my child to take on the church's values. But I do expect Joshua to understand why we believe what we believe. And Joshua, he believes in God. He believes in Jesus. He knows they are real. Because he prayed to find me and he found me. I prayed. He would find me and he found me. I do not want him to end up living in this group home for the rest of his teenage life. He doesn't deserve it. And I have a niece. I have a niece. Not really my niece. I just call her my niece. She was adopted. And her parent put her in a group home until she was 18 and tried to sabotage anyone who tried to adopt her. That child is 18 and thriving now with with a job. I mean, she's really doing great. But this parent to my son, he blames everything on my son. He was leaving my son alone with his father who was an alcoholic and he would get so drunk and pass out and Joshua, that's how he stole his car and was able to go do what he wanted. So they put a protection order on that man to keep him away from Joshua know that man's son blames Joshua for why that man can't come around no more? Oh no, that old man is the reason why he can't come around no more because he made the choice to drink around Joshua and not keep an eye on him. Please help us. I don't know what else to do. I know that because Joshua was not adopted, I can get him. I have spoken to three different attorneys who have told me that I can. The retainer starts at six grand. Traveling cost, that's going to be a few thousand dollars. And by the time it's all over with, the attorney alone is probably going to be 15 grand, maybe 20. I set the cost at 25,000 because I want to be able to pay for the attorney and I want to be able to make it to every single court date. I always prayed that the ones who took him away from me would be the ones to hand him back. And right now, The woman who is the ex-wife of the foster dad, she wants Joshua to be happy. She wanted Joshua with her, but he's sabotaging her chance, and DCS is letting him. But this man does not want my child back, so he's handing him right back into the very system that took him away from me. I have to fight. I have to fight. And... When this is over with, we are going to sue the state. 
We are going to sue the state for every single kid that's been done like Joshua has been done. We are going to sue the state for every single child that has died in the care of the state. And we are going to seek justice, not money. So I pray that this story has touched you to where you can either donate or at least pray that we get what we need. And I thank you just for taking the time to hear this. Joshua thanks you. I thank you so much.